Recording. Hi, Angela, coming to you live from South Florida and my humid hair. That humid hair is working for you, Fran Thomas. Florida it's, looks good on you, sister. Well, it's just really fuzzy. And if y'all aren't watching this on YouTube, if you're just listening to this episode, then you, you just only can imagine just, you know how you do when you go to the beach and you're just like, I, why bother with your hair? Why bother? That's where I'm at. Why bother? If they are listening and not watching, it's worth <laughs> getting on YouTube to see how voluptuous friends beach hair it's I love it well you you're not look you're looking at it from a distance but up close it's just very fuzzy anyway you're glowing from the sun-kissed appearance we'll talk about why we're here but just the fact that people get to live here I I'm really this is okay I'll just start by saying where we are in South Florida we are um, in the, we're south of Tampa in Bradenton and Sarasota. This, this area down here is just to die for, but we're down here because Clay, our oldest, you know, he's, he's contemplating some job opportunities and, and that's all great and good. Um, so because it was spring break, well, let's just come down here and check out this opportunity for him. Okay. So while we're down here, I've got two observations. One uh, is the hair, whatever. Two, we got to talk about this place that I'm staying near the IMG Academy. If people know anything about sports and kind of pay attention to the recruiting world, you've heard of IMG Academy. And then three, we've got to talk about Sarasota, Florida. Have you ever heard of it? Been there? Know anything about it? We'll come to that in just a minute. But Angela, IMG Academy. We're staying at the Legacy Hotel at IMG. Okay. I just need you to absorb what I'm about to talk to the people about. Okay. I'm reading this, I'm reading this to you from the website. Okay. Um, IMG, imagine this. Just imagine that you have a sixth through 12th grader because that's what it's open to. So and I in, do. I yeah. have one of those. Okay. So if you are willing to pay, I don't know, there's a little bit of a range here depending on their age, their sport, I think, and I don't know what else, but let's just say that you have a child that is really good at a certain sport and you want to develop that sport in them, you can send them, I'm, I don't even know how you get accepted into this school. It is a school, but um, to the tune of, I don't know, 60, 70, close to $80,000 a what? year. Stop it. Okay. People do so that? People are clearly doing it. Brand. And, okay, so this is off the website. It's in a mortgage. That's a oh, house it's, mortgage. It's insane. I literally am still struggling, and I've been uh, I've been in this little world for a couple of days now. Um, okay, IMG Academy is the world's most prestigious sports performance and educational institution. It was established in 1978 with a pioneering concept known as the Nick Voluntary Tennis Academy. With our world-renowned boarding school and noted sports camps, IMG continues to set the standard for total academic, athletic, and personal development in youth student athletes. It is 600 acres. And when I tell you that this is country club on steroids, I mean, every sport, I can't find a sport that's not represented Every sport is here, and these are athletes that they go to school in the morning. They have chefs that prepare all this glorious food for them. Every building is, I feel like Under Armour and Gatorade are everywhere. Their sponsors, their names are on everything. And every, every sport has a building dedicated to their craft and they're they're here so that they can be developed and hopefully go to a D1 school to play that sport and eventually you know maybe make it to the professional circuit for that sport but 
I don't know how these kids stay grounded in this type of environment. Mm -hmm. I have watched and observed from this hotel the recruiting side. I'm just eavesdropping on all these conversations. Very international population is here too. I want to say that I read 80 countries are represented here. I don't know the number of students that's here. I feel like there's a bazillion of them. Everything's branded. Like apparently any student and employee, you don't just get up and put clothes on. Like it's like a private school, um, and as long as you have IMG gear on, then, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be like everybody's got to wear blue or black or whatever. It's just the craziest thing. I've just, I can't get my mind wrapped around it and that, that people do this. But when you see the facilities and apparently they're getting a good education, I hope that, I hope so for that amount of money. It's just <laughs> the nuttiest thing I've ever seen in all of my entire life. So I don't have a point of reference in my brain. I, I didn't know that existed. I have only heard about it through different coaches at Union. You know, they'll talk about, oh, well, that kid, he's going to IMG. Well, that meant nothing to me. But now I'm like, oh, IMG, OMG. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep hearing when you say IMG. I just, I know uh, if you don't know sports and care about sports or anything, you're just like, oh, shut up, move on. But there are these, there are these prep schools that a lot of them are in the Florida area that the goal is to educate and develop this kid and their sport. But anyway, they go to lunch, they go to school in the morning, they have lunch, and then all afternoon is dedicated to training and all the things. But anyway, what in the world, y'all? What in the world? Well, I, I have two things to say about where you are geographically. Okay. Uh -huh, yeah. The first thing is, and it, it's, it's funny because I can compare Florida to my knowledge of the Bible up until I read my Bible all the way through. This is going to be funny, but hang with me. So before I read the Bible a few years ago, it's like I knew about Genesis and I knew Jesus comes in the New Testament and the Psalms are in the middle. Right. So with Florida, it's like, I know 30A and I know there's Key West yep. and I know there's like Saint whoever's in the middle, like, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, Orlando. I do know Orlando, but yeah, I'm thinking I'm like on. beaches. I'm thinking oh, okay. ocean. Are you okay. on the Gulf or are you on the Atlantic? The Gulf side. Okay. You're on the Gulf side. So I'm just, I have no reference. No. Okay. 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 So um, just picture Orlando is on, if you're looking at Florida, just picture Orlando's over to the right. And okay. then to the left on the opposite side on the coast is the area where we are. So it's just gorgeous because it's the beautiful water. It's the white beaches. It's just beautiful. And, and let me say, because I said three things, we'll stop after this. Sarasota, Florida. Okay. We went up to, we went up, we drove up to Sarasota this morning for a reason. It doesn't matter. So on the way back, we were like, well, let's take the scenic route. I felt like there was a section of Sarasota that had to be the wealthiest area in all of Florida, maybe very similar to Miami, because I have seen that. Just insane, the houses that are on the water. I just kept saying out loud over and over, what are these people doing in their jobs? Because there is this guy, I think I've seen it on TikTok, like he'll find a nice house and he'll go up to the door and knock on the door and go, hey, my name's so-and-so and I'm on TikTok and you've got a great house. What do you do for a living? And these people <laughs> will answer. And I felt like that's what I wanted to do today. Just, what are you people doing that you can afford to live like this? Sarah, uh, on behalf on behalf of, of me and the people listening, could you just knock on one door before you come home and see what they say? I just, I, I felt like an idiot and I felt like I was just repeating myself <laughs> over and over. I felt like a four-year-old and I'm at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, we're not poor. We're not poor. No, but, but we're not that. <laughs> but what is that? Like, I'm thinking, how much is the insurance? Like, forget uh, the house. You got utilities. You've got uh, property taxes. And hey, every I'm, single one of these, these houses, there's a big, massive boat uh, that's right up on the water. I said, 
I said, you know, I did an LA Hollywood tour because of course I am several years ago when I went to LA and, and did the Hollywood, you know, show me where all the celebrities live. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember mm -hmm. that when we saw Justin Bieber's house in LA that the, the tour person, he said, you know, Justin, uh, Justin, Justin Bieber, yeah, yeah Justin Bieber, second, Justin Timberlake for a split second, Justin Bieber, the tour guide said, you know, he has like six houses. He's not in this LA house a lot. He predominantly lives in either New York or Canada, whatever, and started listing, you know, he's got a home in Colorado. He's got a home in Florida and, you know, they can just buy these houses outright. They ain't got no mortgage payment, but again, you're just thinking, I cannot get my mind wrapped around that kind of money no I can't I can't but you know what else you're close to and I wish it would work out can you right. stay one more night can you stay tomorrow night no okay we you're were trying to you're just an hour from the Braves well listen we we were going to do that last night they're not, they didn't play they can't they were playing today but they canceled it because of potential rain so they weren't playing today but they played um last night and we were going to go but the way our schedule and the things that we were doing it didn't work out but we had searched tickets and you know I all figured, that kind of stuff. I figured you had I knew you were awfully close oh yeah I know how much you love baseball and just anybody we were gonna you know we just googled grapefruit league and found all the people playing and anyway yeah we were so close we were so close <laughs> Anyway, I love okay. that. So enough about trip. all this high dollar <laughs> stuff happening around me where I'm just kind of like, I felt like I was splurging when I got two Starbucks yesterday. <laughs> well, speaking of speaking of high dollar, you know, last podcast episode, we talked about the kindergarten pep talks and we yeah. did a random acts of kindness challenge for people yes. listening. Yes. And, and I thought this is something I didn't think about at the time, but it's something that you and I actually do. Um, that fits in this category and some of the feedback from listeners was the same and that is leaving a larger tip for people yes. in the service industry okay well you know what I'm glad you said that because never considered random acts of kindness in that but I did do that last night with my dinner mm -hmm. you know I think I had texted you or boxered you um that I was eating dinner by myself and I did they put a 20 percent gratuity in your check you know they just build that in but I added to that because mm -hmm. gas down here is four dollars and 15 cents a gallon wow. so um i just thought this poor girl let me help her out so i didn't even think about random acts of kindness yeah so you you just naturally did it well that's fine okay so what else do we need to talk about with that what else that's fine. um so i'm going in the morning to college in birmingham i'm going that's to fine. sanford for mom weekend for chi that's omega fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so funny having a college kid who forgets that you're a grandma at heart. <laughs> Kaylee right. Snyder sent me our itinerary, and apparently we're going to have so much fun partying. Um, she's going to expect me to be up past about seven o'clock on Saturday night, and I don't do that, Fran. <laughs> Listen, last night I went to bed at twelve thirty and thought, "What am Whoa. I?" Mm -hmm. Party twelve thirty, Angela. It was already the next day. Florida Fran is fun Fran. There's no doubt. Well, Listen, Saturday night, I will be at Mr. Samford pageant and it sounds like a riot. So yeah, I can't wait to tell y'all about Mr. Samford. That'll be fun. So that, that that's my big weekend. But, um, the, when I was thinking about the tips, um, I, I don't know why this is so hard, but it took me at least 10 minutes at the nail salon on my lunch hour to choose a nail color. Why is this so hard? Why is this so hard? Because, because, okay. So see this. Your nails color. are beautiful. I want to know the name of that color. Oh, I have no idea, but I do, I do. They kind of match my sweatshirt. Do. I do recall standing there staring <laughs> and I thought, well, no, I want that one. Well, no, this, I don't know how I feel about that on my skin tone. I picked up no less. I'm not kidding you. Probably five or six colors. And why is that stressful? I need three colors to choose from not a hundred and three it reminded me of trying to choose the color paint for my interior 
and yeah. everybody on the internet has an opinion about a gray or a neutral color mm -hmm. and they all believe that they're right and they yell at you but I needed somebody to yell at me and say pick this pink and go back to work so yeah. here's where I landed <laughs> pink it's pink I'm very happy with it but but it's OPI colors it's called La Paz at Tivoli Hot Oh, that's fun. And it's French. But I, it, what I was going to say about the tip is I, the little guy that did my nails was so sweet and kind and patient with me. And I left him a bigger tip than, you know, I might have otherwise. And just his face and his excitement yeah. and his sincere yeah. Yeah. appreciation. It's fun to do that for people. Well, listen, Angela, because we ain't living in Sarasota, Florida and paying for IMG, we can give, <laughs> we can give a little extra. Yes. And I'm sure these people down here can do it too. Good grief. But you know, the little things are the big things. And when you see somebody smile and be so genuinely appreciative of that small, kind gesture, let's do more of that over and over let's and over. Let's do it more. Let's make people smile. Yes. Okay. So my nails got me in the mood for spring. Mm -hmm. We got these spring colors. Guess what else happened that always makes me think about spring on the farm? Uh, something had to do with animals. I was going to say something had to do with an animal. Somebody's going to have a baby. We have a swan egg. <laughs> Nick's going to be a daddy again, I hope. I hope they have lots of eggs and lots of babies. It is so hard to get these swans to have eggs that turn into babies that make it on the farm. It's just hard. But so we had three the, last year. Tell me the time frame. Like what was the, what's the time um, frame? Here? I don't know the answer to that. It seems like last year we talked about this and compared her to an elephant. It felt like it took forever for those eggs to become actual swan babies. I want to say it was a month or two. It was a long time. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. either. I'm going to Google that. You Google that. I'm going to uh, look that up. I need to know. Have y'all, while you're looking that up, I am obsessed. I don't want them at all. I just think they're funny when I see them on TikTok videos are goats, baby goats, when they're first born. Hey, do y'all have goats? We used to. We okay. don't anymore, but we used to. Okay. I think they're, they're so fun. I think they're funny. I, and when they show them like in their house running and <laughs> the way they run and people actually have them and they actually have them in their house, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> that's a that's a new pet. Okay. What'd you find out? How, well, how what, long? What, the, what those people don't show is all the goat pellets that get oh. left. No, all over your carpet so no, don't buy your kids a goat for easter and expect it to be cute on your carpet what about a bunny you have thoughts about a bunny with uh, easter? No. we have been there done that with all the animals 41 days is the incubation days. period for the eggs so okay. um and they always the dad always is just really dumb about where he builds the nest and he built the nest on the tree line going into the woods where the foxes and the coyotes and the predators live so carl god love him carl has to take this nest and move it to a floating dock and then fight with the male and convince the male that this is an appropriate nest because the mom wants to get on the nest. But if the male doesn't approve it, then he fights her to get off the nest and go to the nest that he built. So wow. Bird brains. When you call somebody a bird brain, it's based What's off happening? Mick Swagger, the swan being stupid. Um, so has Carl moved this nest? Mm -hmm. He moved the nest and she was sitting on it this morning. I sent him a video because he's out of town and I sent him a video saying it's working. It appears to be working. So now would he, would he want to move it back now that she's been on it? Last year, we had to put him in a pen to um, keep him from causing um, problems. So uh -huh. it, it, you just have to wait and see <laughs> there is never a dull moment on the farm. Listen. Yeah. Well, that's exciting though. Yay. That's fun. And Carl took Cole to Nebraska on a turkey hunt. So they they're are happy. there. Yeah. They're living their best life. They are living their best life. Um, March Madness, the Peacocks play tomorrow night. Listen, I'm, you know, this is, I'm so out of sorts because we're out of town. So I, I, I have said two things. One, I have no idea if March Madness is even happening, but apparently... <laughs> Games start back up tonight. I was, mm -hmm. I learned that. And then the other thing is nobody cares about this and we sure aren't talking about it. Uh, no, that's not true. I lied. People do care about this, but just the state of the world, you know how you get when you're just away and you're detached from everything. It's mm -hmm. like, you really don't know what's going on. Um, that was terrible. I did not mean that y'all know my heart, but um, anyway, so basketball is still happening. Apparently. It's still happening. The the Sweet 16, by the time this airs, will have already happened. But our Peacocks 
our peacocks, our peacocks. That, that we all love, even though we didn't know them a few weeks ago, they play number three Purdue. So we'll see what happens. Listen, I'm cheering for the underdog. I love it. Okay. So my sister, Danielle told me something so fun and I couldn't wait to tell you about this, but I waited until you and I haven't talked the last few days. All right. Because you've been on this adventure. So you're going to love this. Um, Jenny Allen has a new book out called find your people, right? For people listening that don't know, it is a great book, not necessarily in a, like a bigger context study, but if you want to get to know actual people, well, (laughs) up close and personal, this is the perfect book for that setting. So what she is a part of, and I love this, Danielle, Danielle, lives in a neighborhood in our town in a suburb and they all got to looking around and realized who is my neighbor love your neighbor I don't even know who my neighbor is so in their neighborhood they have created this opportunity twice a week you don't have to come to all of them but I love this concept Thursday night at six or Saturday at like 10 and you just show up or I think it's at seven because you're not eating dinner they have light snacks but you just show up It's probably 20 women, but they won't all be able to come all the time, but it's within the neighborhood. It's every age, it's every denomination. It's every, there's, there's multicultural people. There's people, there's language barriers. There's different life stages. There's married, widowed, divorced, you name it. And she walked away from the first one the other night, so excited and a little bit teary eyed over how precious and beautiful it was because so many women said things like, I don't know my neighbor. I'm so wrapped up in, you know, whatever's going on. I don't make time for this. Or um, one of them said, I'm so busy connecting other people to each other. I don't have anybody for myself. Mm. And it was just so sweet and precious. And I'm excited to see what comes out of that Mm -hmm. as she tells me about it. But I thought, you know, we need to talk about that on here because I promise you there's people listening who are looking for this. And the best way to find it is to open up your living room And just say, hey, come over. And it can be two or three people. It does not have to be 20. But I love that it's outside of a traditional church context. And it's simply just, hey, if you're in my neighborhood, come over. Yeah. Okay. So um, who? somebody's got to be in charge of it, right? They have two two facilitators who have led Bible studies before within the church. But they decided to take it out of the church and into the neighborhood. And the two facilitators don't go to the same church. That's so they just great. had a similar background leading within the church. That's so fun. Yeah. I know that either two things are happening when people listen to this. They're either saying, oh, I really want to do that. And if that's you, you just be the one to start it. Mm-hmm. Don't wait around on somebody else. Or B, number two, you're the person that just is now covered in anxiety going, oh, no way would I step into that space with complete strangers or the other or the other line of thought and I've got an answer for that too is the person going well I would love to attend and I don't even mind answering questions but my house is a wreck and nobody's coming over so for that person you find the person with the clean house that's not likely to leave and you say we're coming to your house but I'll lead it yeah that's all stressful you know it's just stressful but somebody's got to be willing to say okay let's do this we don't. And Jenny, Jenny makes things easy. You know, she does the conversation cards and you're really just facilitating. You don't right. have to really know anything about anything. Right. Just how to read, show up read, with the book, read the card. <laughs> she said one of them was a one on the Enneagram and she was like, oh. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm really tempted to print out this study guide for all of you. So you'll all have one in your hand. <laughs> So anyway, oh, I just thought that was really cute and sweet and fun. And that is awesome. They really get it. I don't know all my neighbors. I probably need to do this too, but. Well, I know it. And we just, you know, we just, it's so interesting because you and I have talked about how, you know, things are so different now mm-hmm. than when we were kids, but it's just interesting. I don't know. It's like, do people not want to know each other or you're just, truly busy and we are in all the comings and goings and so you just don't have time and you know we just didn't have all this extracurricular as kids that people have now and I think your neighbors it can be literal but it can also be people that you're doing sports teams with or you know that you're doing extracurricular with those are also your neighbors but I don't know it's just different 
It is. And she said, you know, I, I want to know my neighbors well enough where I can just show up, you know, and, and have a little conversation, but also know legitimately who they are. Yeah. And I think the pandemic has just conditioned all of us to say no and keep people at an arm's length and to mm-hmm. isolate. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to just fall into that automatic, you know, well, I can't do that, or I'm not supposed to socialize. And it's, it's going to feel weird getting yeah. back out there again. Yeah. And just again, think about how that is affecting um, just a younger generation. Is it affecting them, the pandemic and socializing? And I don't know, Lord have mercy. What, what, what 2020 did to us? I don't know if how and how it affected every age group. I don't know mm-hmm. what that study is going to look like. <laughs> well, and I think that's why probably people feel a little anxious about it or feel like they don't have people. And I'm so glad Jenny made this easy and readily available because if you're listening, it really is a matter of going, okay, who's two or three people I can get together with, even if you're meeting at a coffee shop, wherever, but right. fight for it. It's worth it. Yeah. So. That's great. I, w- I want to hear a follow up in about four I know. Weeks. It'll be fun. I'm proud of her. I just thought that was really fun. Um, so what's the Lord teaching you, Fran? Update us on your life. Has it calmed down any? Okay. So in the ep- the previous episode, I just talked about just pure exhaustion. And pause right there and let me say, we got more feedback from more of y'all listening who said, I'm so glad you talked about this because I feel like this and needed to hear that that's normal. So thank you, Fran, for opening up about how hard life can be. We need to talk about that. Well, and, and yes, we're all busy. This for me was, and I think it's just this combination of busy pushing yourself, whether you're choosing to, or it's work or family responsibilities, whatever, we can find ourselves in a place, in a season, in a situation, in a time frame where for me, I couldn't do anything outside of what was causing me to be so busy and, and, you know, all of that. And so it was affecting, you know, and I talked about just, I didn't, I didn't have the energy to open up my Bible and read it. And I really didn't want to either because when I did, it was just reading and I don't even know what I was reading. And it was just a real struggle to, to have joy, to have any kind of life, like in just internal things that give you life and joy and everything was so hard. I've never been depressed or anxious that required me to be on medication, but I'm, I would love to know if I was moving into just a season of depression where I just, I didn't want to do, I just didn't want to do the things. You were not yourself. It was just really hard. And and so um, I, I think what I'm now learning is that it's still okay. And this is, I think only a certain people would maybe understand what I'm saying here, because I do know that what I'm about to say, I could very easily have judged this kind of comment prior to this season. It's okay to just take a minute, to take a break, to let to learn how to let yourself recover. And that's going to look different for everybody, but, but it's okay to just move however slowly, however you need to, however you want to, but also knowing, am I being just stagnant? Am I choosing not to kind of get out of this exhaustion? Am I depressed? I don't know. I just, for me, the timing was just so perfect for our spring break and being able to take a minute and literally physically go somewhere else was just been so very helpful. But I can tell I'm not 100% for sure. Definitely not. But just the little bit of life that you feel inside, it just and the joy, it's it's very slowly coming back. And I, and then I have to fight anxiety of, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to that place where I just, where I was, I don't want to go back and how to navigate all of this is just really interesting. Cause 
I've never been at this, at the point that I was where I just thought, the heck with all of it. I just, I don't have the desire to do anything outside of, you know, go to work because I've got to do that every day. But I don't know, just a bizarre season, very bizarre. Well, we always say be kind to yourself. Yes. Thank and you, Ashley Bausch, for t- teaching us how to do that. A to the men. We've got to get her back on pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. so um, I can get some free therapy. <laughs> mm-hmm. All of us. All of us want that for sure. Um, what What are you noticing in your day-to-day as you're coming out of this or what is helping you? What advice would you give or encouragement to somebody who's experienced something similar you know, what, what's it looking like in your, granted you're in Florida, we can't all pick up and go to Florida. I wish we could. I wish we could scoop all y'all up and go on vacation, mm-hmm. but, but what's helping you? What are you noticing? Um, are you, are you just jumping back in where you left off? Is it a progression? You know, what, what's your time with the Lord? Just speak into all that. Well, time with the Lord is still rough because of the, <laughs> that dang Bible recap. <laughs> And, and that's okay. You can have time with the Lord. It's not in a structured reading plan every single day of the year. Thank you, Lord, for that freedom. Amen. Thank you for that. But however, it does give me anxiety. I mean, I'm like only three days behind, maybe four days behind now, but I'm so tired of Deuteronomy and these laws. It's almost done. It's almost and, done. And I feel like I've just read all this 16 times and I don't understand. I don't have the strength. Yeah. And the mental capacity to, to listen to the podcast, which that also bothers me because I know there'd be tremendous clarity there, but it does require energy. And even though I'm away and I do have the time to do all of those things, I still don't want to. So it's baby steps. And, and I think that we just have to be okay with baby steps. I told you before we started recording that I'm not an achiever. I'm not a, perf- well, a performer, I don't know, an achiever, no. Um, but it does, I do feel bad. I do you feel like bad. structure. You like structure and much, routine. Yes, I, I very much do. Um, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm I'm ready to to just be normal, whatever that even is, but you know what I'm saying. I don't know. I get me out of Deuteronomy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, I I think it's important because we've heard people say it's important and it's important to me too, to hear the honesty in the conversation of Fran loves Jesus. Fran has, you know, things that knock her over in life. And guess what? You you can still be just as good a Christian and, yeah. and not do all these things, checking all these boxes. And we say that all the time, but when we're walking it out in life, I think it's important to just go, Hey, let's talk about this a minute. Yeah. The Lord well, doesn't love you any more or less on a day oh, like this. Oh, and that's, that's where you just, you take a deep breath and you rest there. You don't want to stay in this place, right? but you do just are thankful that he loves us no matter where we are. And, you know, it's just real easy to, to I think, I think that in the past I have felt very self-righteous in what I'm doing what I'm leading, what I'm accomplishing or performing in or anything. I think you just naturally feel like, look at me, look how great I've got it and how together, together I am. And I think we just, for me now, I'm very more tender to catching myself when I start criticizing what someone is doing or not doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, good grief. Like we know this logically, everybody's journey is their own. It is not ours to have any judgment or criticism of whether it's the good things or it may appear like they're not doing anything. We just, we can't go there in our minds. And I don't know, it's just crazy. Maybe I'm having a midlife crisis, Angela. No, you're not having a midlife crisis, but it, it's important that we go, Hey, let's not judge these people. Let's encourage and build up because we're all just one yeah. step away from being in that pit for a minute. Yeah. And it's temporary. Yeah. But it's, I mean, life is hard. We yeah. know life's hard. Okay. You want some encouragement? Cause yeah. I wrote this down. I loved it okay. so much. Okay. It's going to be a good place to, to land because it's so, so good. 
Jesus calling. I love it because it's just so simple for my brain early in the morning. Yes. But this morning it said, this is a time in your life when you must learn to let go, Mm. let go of loved ones, of possessions and of control. Mm. And that hit me so hard because we talked (laughs) in our fellowship, you group last night about how it's so easy to surrender everything, but our spouses and our kids. Oh, sure. You know, I mean, if a lot of us can relate to that, but but it, it, it was just fresh on my mind. And it said, in order to let go of something that is precious to us, we have to rest in the Lord's presence where we are complete and just mm-hmm. knowing that because he never changes, we can feel secure even in the midst of cataclysmic changes, whatever that means. It sounds like the rough patch that, <laughs> that you just talked yeah. about. And, and here's the thing. We honestly, it's, it all comes down to trust. Yes. You know, do we trust him? Do we believe he is who he says he is? Do we honestly believe that and that is the fine line where one minute yes and then another minute no and we just go back and forth like Mm -hmm. a ping pong ball all the time I want to Mm -hmm. I just don't know that I can say I mean some days I can say yes to that well it's great when things are easy that's right but you know what's interesting in in Deuteronomy in the Bible recap it this morning we were talking about how when things were easy, that's when they, they just went off the rails. Yes. When things were hard, we're depending yes. on God. And it's all just such a circular, Listen, I don't want things to be got bad just so I want to reach out to the Lord more. I want to be appreciative and grateful in the easy times. Oh, for sure. You know how we were talking about in, um, in our class that I was just, I was mesmerized. I, I am a little mesmerized by the fact that Moses was able to spend such time with, um, with God. And when he was getting the 10 commandments and like, he was up there with him for days and days and days and days and days and days and days. days. Okay. And then he comes back down and that's when the dang Israelites, you know, have all gone to creating these idols and, you know, all that mess. And you just think, well, you know, that's what we do when, when we just feel like the Lord's not doing things in the way and in the time and in the fashion that we, we want, well, we just start to take things into our own hands. And nowadays, especially just with instant gratification, you know, God forbid, we have to be patient and he's like, you know what? I'm going, we're going, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet up here in the heavenlies for a little while. And, and, you know, just see what you do with yourself. And we're no different. We're no different. Mm-hmm. Well, so, God I wrote it. this, I wrote this verse down this morning because I knew I needed it. And maybe somebody else needs it too, because it was talking about how, you know, that the Lord is our security and nobody can take that away. No circumstance can take that away. But I love this Psalm. It's Psalm 89, 15. And it says, blessed are those, I want to be blessed, (laughs) blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. And I looked up the word acclaim, and acclaim means to praise enthusiastically and publicly. Mm. So the song immediately, I thought, okay, I need a worship song. I got to get my Jesus on. I got, hey, Alexa, turn it up to volume 10. We're going to get this song going while I get ready for work. And I turned on um, Raise a Hallelujah mm. is my favorite. That's just immediately what I thought of. So I thought, you know, last last episode was Random Acts of Kindness. I think this episode, the challenge needs to be, let's crank up some praise music and learn to acclaim and praise enthusiastically and publicly. And just remember, he's holding our hand. He's not yeah. going to let go no matter what it is. That's where That's where our security comes from. Anytime somebody says anything, like to compliment you if somebody praises something that you've done Angela or compliments you in any form or fashion whether it's personal work ministry life whatever the very first thing that should come out of our mouth is isn't the Lord so good yeah I don't do that nearly enough but that's that's praise that is giving praise back to him that it's not in our own effort and doings, Mm -hmm. he's doing that through us and wants to, wants to do that. And so let's give him some verbal praise. And for a lot of people, that may be hard. That may be a hard thing to open up your mouth and say, isn't the Lord good, but I don't know, isn't the Lord good, Angela? 
He's so good. And it really, you know, we're smiling saying that you can't be in a funky mood and, and praise the Lord and listen to a worship song without right. coming out of it at some point. That's right. He's just so good to us. He is so good. He loves us in spite of our humanity and well, that is beautiful, beautiful thing. So anyway, this was fun. I hope this episode blesses somebody. <laughs> Did you hear my chicken? I think my rooster just said, amen. He's getting cranked up out there. Well, y'all, y'all stay tuned for swan baby egg updates. Maybe we'll have more, more fun on the farm this summer. Please just go tell daddy Mick Swagger (laughs) to behave and not act like a fool. Cause we do not, uh, that I don't have time to get worked up over him. No, he needs to settle down. Settle down, everybody settle down. (laughs) Okay. This is fun. This is so fun. Everybody. Thanks always for listening to us ramble about the serious and the not so serious. We love you guys. Have a super great day.